An incision for insertion of a chest tube has damaged a superficially located nerve over the left fifth intercostal space in the mid-axillary line. Which of the following is the most likely consequence of this injury? So, we are looking for a nerve that is located just beneath the skin, superficial location, in the mid-axillary line, and in the fifth intercostal space, almost at this position, because the chest tube insertion is usually done in the fifth or sixth intercostal spaces in the mid-axillary line, and the damage of this nerve is a likely consequence of this injury. So what will happen, which nerve will be affected, and what will happen if this nerve is affected? The nerve that is likely to be affected has this relation. It is the long thoracic nerve, nerve to serratus anterior. You can see serratus anterior here. These are the digitations of serratus anterior muscle, and the serratus anterior is supplied by long thoracic nerve. Long thoracic nerve is a branch of the roots of the brachial plexus from C5, 6, and 7. It descends down and supplies serratus anterior muscle. Serratus anterior muscle is attached from one side, it's attached to the upper eight ribs, and from the other side, it's attached to the medial border of the scapula, an anterior aspect of the medial border of the scapula, and the muscle protracts the scapula and helps in rotating the scapula as during abduction. If the muscle is paralyzed, then this will result in winged scapula. In other words, the medial border of the scapula will become prominent posteriorly when the patient is asked to push against a wall or a hard surface. So winging of the scapula is the correct option. Another correct option that can be added here is difficulty during abduction of the shoulder or difficulty in combing the hair, especially for a woman, because serratus anterior also helps an abduction of the shoulder joint beyond 90 degrees. Beyond 90 degrees, shoulder abduction requires the action of serratus anterior and the trapezius muscles. So if the serratus anterior is paralyzed, then this will result in weakness or difficulty in abducting the shoulder. But still there is a possibility of abduction because trapezius muscle is supplied by the accessory nerve. Let's look at the other options. Horner syndrome results from injury of the sympathetic trunk, the upper part of the thoracic sympathetic trunk depriving the sympathetic fibers that are destined for the head and neck. And that's why the patient presents with this syndrome, which consists of ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, and the flushing of the face. The other option, hoarseness of voice, again might result because of a nerve injury, but the nerve injury in this case is the recurrent laryngeal nerve that is not superficial in position, that is located deep in the superior mediastinum or in the root of the neck. Diminished expiration is unlikely to take place because expiration in general, it's a, a passive process. It's a passive recoil of the thoracic wall tissue. And even in forced expiration, where there is a need for the contraction of intercostal muscles and abdominal muscles, then uh, these are supplied by intercostal nerves, which are deeply located. And in such a procedure, one of these nerves might be affected. There is a little possibility that this diminished expiration takes place. Paralysis of the left hemidiaphragm indicates that there will be injury of the phrenic nerve. And the phrenic nerve is a deep nerve. It's located inside the thoracic cavity and not on the thoracic wall. It's unlikely to be damaged by uh, such a procedure. There's no possibility actually for the phrenic nerve to be damaged in such a procedure.